So Susie, yes. where are we going to be tomorrow? Tomorrow? Uh -huh. In Europe. <laughs> and who's excited to be there? <laughs> On this trip we decided to take KLM. It was again an overnight flight direct from Edmonton to Amsterdam. I couldn't be more impressed with the service and quality of our KLM flight. And uh, we landed early in the morning at Amsterdam Schiphol Airport, where we then checked into the Citizen M Hotel. So we, uh, we arrived here in Amsterdam. We're at the Citizen M Hotel. We landed, what about 9.30 this morning, got into the hotel at 10.30, went straight to sleep. So now we've just woken up and uh, we're heading back to the airport to find a place to eat and uh, to check out where the train station are, is for our uh, train ride to Paris tomorrow. Schiphol Airport is truly amazing. It's one of the biggest airports in Europe and it's attached to one of the biggest train stations. It's literally right downstairs. So for us it was really convenient to fly into Schiphol, stay across the street at the Citizen M Hotel, and in the morning we headed back to the airport, downstairs to the train station where we caught a Thales train that took us direct from Amsterdam to Paris. It just doesn't get more convenient than that. At the end of this day, while we were looking for dinner, we got caught in a huge Paris rainstorm. It sent the regular Parisian restaurant crowd scrambling for cover, and we ended up huddling in a subway station with probably 30 or 40 other people waiting for the storm to pass by. Welcome to Paris! So what do you think of Paris at night, Susan? It's crazy. What's crazy about it? It's crazy, noisy, and alive with cars, stuff, restaurants. It's wonderful. So we just came back from Italian dinner. Yep. And what was your favorite part of the whole night? The wine. The ambiance. Anything else? The chocolate mousse. The fact that you paid the bill. There you go. The day after landing in Paris, we thought we'd take a tour of the city in this vintage Citroën 2CV. Uh, we had a great tour guide and it was a great way to introduce ourselves to kind of the main tourist spots in the city of Paris. We had nothing specific planned, so we just spent the day wandering around Paris seeing the sights. Completely by accident, we ended up at the Louvre. It was very interesting to see the grounds of the Louvre. And then toward the end of the day, we had an excellent dinner at a restaurant called La Mancie. We're on the grounds of the Louvre, and it's a rainy day, but it certainly hasn't slowed down the tourist traffic one little bit. And this is the Arc de Triomphe de Carousel, which was built between 1806 and 1808, and it celebrates Napoleon's victories of the previous year. full day in Paris was a day we set aside to kind of just do whatever we wanted. 
but in particular we wanted to walk around and especially to go down by the Seine River. Uh, this part of the city, the river area, is just gorgeous. There's so much to do, lots of attractions for tourists. Uh, we had the opportunity to take a bateau bus, which is like a water taxi that picks you up and drops you off at various areas along the river. We had some excellent food and some good restaurants. We uh, had wine, we had beer, we did a little bit of shopping, and we basically just spent the day seeing the sights at our leisure. It was such a relaxing day that we really enjoyed it. two key truths that we accepted about Paris on this day. The first is that there are no ugly people. The second is that there is no bad food. And that last point was underscored by the wonderful crepes that we had for dinner that night. We had a late start. Once we did get up, we went down to the subway. First order of business was to have a quick bite to eat, and then it was off to the Louvre to see the museum. So we, we got in the Louvre in about three minutes because Susan Sweet talked to security guard. Inside the Louvre, we had a lesson in the French attitude toward public toilets. And that seems to be that A, we're going to have hardly any of them, like almost none. B, the ones we do have, we're going to hide really, really well. And C, if you do happen to find one, there's a better than good chance we're going to charge you to use it. After the Louvre, we were back on the hunt for eating, drinking, and shopping opportunities. And on that journey, we got ourselves a very nice taste of some street art. If you're not actually eating fine French food, the next best thing you can be doing is shopping for fine French food to eat later. So on this day, the first place we stopped at was a store that specialized in foie gras and smoked salmon. Then it was on to a cheese shop, a produce shop, and then we shopped for meats and other delicacies. It was a fantastic introduction to French cuisine. What's up with the wine, Susie? What's that? What's up with the wine? It's a high altitude French wine. Where is it produced? In France. Mm, very nice. What do you think of the French subway, Susie? Uh, there are a lot of French <laughs> on the French subway. On our last day in Paris, we made our way to the Jardin du Luxembourg. It's a beautiful set of gardens right in the heart of Paris. And what we noticed here is how well the Parisians behave themselves in these public spaces. There's no graffiti, there's no trash, there's no drug use, there's no people camped out. And everywhere you look, there were loose chairs that people could just help themselves to to make themselves comfortable. Something I don't think you'd ever get away with in North America. Unfortunately on this night, Susan and I made an awful choice of Italian restaurant and ended up with a terrible case of food poisoning within just a few hours. Even though we were up most of the night, we managed to crawl out of bed first thing in the morning and come back here to the Gare du Nord train station where we caught this Eurostar to take us to London. Now, once at London, we got out at St. Pancras station and crossed the street here to King's Cross where we then caught the London Northeastern Railway train that took us from London all the way to Edinburgh, Scotland.
Our travel to Edinburgh was poorly timed, unfortunately. While we were in Paris, Queen Elizabeth died, and her casket had arrived in Edinburgh the day before we did. She was actually lying in state in this church when we got there, and the crowds were so thick we couldn't get to our hotel. We eventually did make it through, though, and we sat down to a lovely dinner, which was a nice way to end an otherwise difficult day. Our first full day in Edinburgh, we knew there was going to be big crowds and lots of security given the Queen's funeral, so we opted to leave town in our rented car and head out to St. Andrews with our friends. It was a drive of a few hours and we got to see an immense amount of the Scottish countryside. Uh, we went through quaint towns, we saw farmland and pastures, and eventually we uh, ended up in St. Andrews, which was on the coast, and is a well-known golf community, of course, and a beautiful municipality in its own right. Day was a bit of a more relaxed day for us. We got up late, enjoyed a late breakfast, and then took a stroll down the Royal Mile and finally to Holyrood Park. This was our day to see Edinburgh Castle, so we started off our morning touring the gardens below the castle grounds and then made our way up the long climb to the castle itself. Once inside, we took a tour of the castle and got some gorgeous views of downtown Edinburgh. No trip to Scotland would be complete without going to Glasgow. I wish I could tell you more about the town and show you some pictures of it, but we really didn't get to see too much. I spent most of my day at the Transportation Museum, while Susan thought her time would be better spent shopping. Our final day in Edinburgh was actually one of my favorites. Susan and I and our friends decided that we'd go our separate ways and just have some alone time to do our own thing. So I took the day and had a walk from central Edinburgh all the way down to Leith, which is a part of the city that's down by the water. It was an excellent way to discover some uh, different neighborhoods, to see the layout of the city, some of the architecture. I had just a fantastic time viewing some areas I wouldn't have otherwise seen. And I finished off my day by going to an Innocent Gun Brew Pub, having a lovely sandwich and a pint of beer. The next morning we had a fairly leisurely start. We headed down to the train station in Edinburgh for a mid-morning train back to London. This wasn't going to be a long stay in the city. We only planned to spend the rest of the day once we arrived in the early afternoon wandering the area around the Thames and London Bridge. Uh, we had a nice meal in London and then it was up the next morning planning for our trip to our final destination, taking the train from St. Pancras Station to Amsterdam. was an 8.16 a.m. train ride from London to Amsterdam Central train station. It was another good trip on Eurostar through the channel. Once we got to Amsterdam we kind of got a little bit lost in the train station and ended up going out an exit that was sort of uncommon and we couldn't find a taxi or an Uber or anything to get us to our hotel so we simply started walking. We got part way to our destination when we finally managed to flag down a taxi that was driving by 
He told us it was a bit too far to walk, picked us up, and took us efficiently to where we were staying. Once at the hotel, we were pretty hungry, so we just went around the corner where there was a large square. It was Rembrandt Square, and we got a bite to eat, and Susan got to play with a cat, one of the many cats that roams around Amsterdam keeping the rodents in check. The rest of the day was devoted to seeing the sights and just taking in some of the experiences that Amsterdam has to offer. At this point in the trip, we'd both been feeling a little bit under the weather. Susan had had a cold the previous day, and so our energy levels were a little bit down. So this morning, we got up late. We had a brunch just a few blocks away from the canal house that we were staying at. And the rest of the day was just spent sort of wandering around the city, seeing the sights, eating good food, having drinks when we felt like it. Uh, it was a very nice, relaxing day, and a day where we were just sort of recovering from the challenges of the previous couple of days where we weren't feeling so well. By the time the evening rolled around, our wanderings had taken us to a nice little restaurant that was right on the canal, uh, where we enjoyed a couple of beverages to finish off our day. Unfortunately today Susan wasn't feeling well enough to get up and uh, go see things in Amsterdam. The cold had really taken a toll on her. So I was up on my own and got to do one of my favorite things, which is travel around Amsterdam on public transit. Now, whenever I do this in Europe I'm always surprised at how much nicer and safer and cleaner transit is in Europe than it is here in North America. But in any event, I took a streetcar out uh, to one end of the city, I bust around the perimeter of the city and came back in on the subway. Uh, it was a really nice experience. I had a sandwich and beer at Rembrandt Square for lunch, then joined Susan for a nap in the afternoon, after which we went out for dinner and called it a day. Today was one of my favorite days in Europe. As a so often the case with Susan and I, we got up late once again, and this time we made our way down to the Cat Cabinet. This is a museum in Amsterdam that is dedicated to works of art that are inspired by our feline friends. It was a really interesting place to go. There was so much on display. There was uh, art ins or feline inspired art from uh, even very famous artists. And the building itself dated back centuries and was absolutely gorgeous. After the cat cabinet, Susan and I split up. She went shopping and I went uh, down to the waterfront to take in Amsterdam's Maritime Museum. Again, another uh, excellent museum showcasing uh, the Dutch maritime history. There was so much to see there that uh, really I could have spent another day uh, taking in uh, all the exhibits that they had. Uh, once we had come back together in the afternoon, Susan and I headed off for a dinner cruise. This was going to be our last big night in Amsterdam, so we thought uh, we might as well make use of it. Uh, the dinner cruise really showcased the Amsterdam from the waterfront. The food was absolutely excellent. Our uh, host did an excellent job telling us what it was we were looking at and the sites that we were seeing. So it was a great end to uh, most of our activities during our stay in Amsterdam. Uh, there was a deal of houses and people decided to buy an old cargo ship, a small one. There was not enough employment for that moment. So you could easily buy such a ship and decide to live on it. our last full day in Amsterdam was really a down day. We spent the day resting up, uh, packing, getting ready to leave the next day. On September 24th we headed to Schiphol Airport for our flight where we saw what has to be the coolest clock on the planet. I just love the way this thing works. Uh, after spending some time at Schiphol Airport we got on our plane bound for Edmonton and we made our return home. Mm -hmm. 